Hi, my name is Arun Venkatesan and I'm a TensorFlow developer advocate. As you all know, TensorFlow Lite is our production-ready framework for on-device machine learning. TensorFlow Lite supports Android, iOS, Linux, and other platforms. TensorFlow Lite is now deployed on more than 4 billion edge devices worldwide. However, we think we have only scratched the surface. We would like to continue to grow the number of on-device machine learning use cases by, by making TensorFlow Lite more robust and also keeping it simple. And today, we are excited to share with you the recent improvements that we have made to the TensorFlow Lite user journeys. To make onboarding easier for new users, we have recently updated learning materials both on the TensorFlow website as well as made them available on Udacity via a free course. In addition to tutorials and code labs, we also have a list of sample apps and models across a variety of use cases to help you ramp up quickly. These sample apps are updated periodically, along with the release of newer on-device machine learning models to provide you with starter resources. You can not only use these off-the-shelf models and the sample apps, but we also show you an easy way to customize these models to be used on your own data, as well as package and share these models with your teammates, for example. Now, once you've made the choice of either using an off-the-shelf model or customizing an existing model for your own need, we introduce a new set of tools to, make, to use this model within an Android app by reducing the boilerplate code that you need to write. And finally, TensorFlow Lite is not only class platform, but also supports hardware accelerators specific to each platform. Over the next few minutes, we'll walk you through each one of these features. Let's start with onboarding. We know that on-device machine learning has only started to pick up steam, and so we wanted to make sure that there are good learning materials to help you get started with on-device machine learning and TensorFlow Lite. We recently launched an introduction to TensorFlow Lite course on Udacity that targets mobile developers that are new to machine learning. We have also updated the code labs and tutorials on the TensorFlow website. For example, the code lab referenced in this slide walks you through the end-to-end -end process to train a TensorFlow machine learning model that can recognize handwritten digits, convert it to a TensorFlow Lite model, and deploy it to an Android app. Once you have familiarized yourself with TensorFlow Lite and have decided to start prototyping your use case, we have a list of sample apps that showcase what is possible with TensorFlow Lite. So instead of developing your apps from scratch, you can select a sample app that is closest to your use case and see how TensorFlow Lite actually works on a device. We have released a couple of new samples, such as the Android and iOS samples for style transfer, using which you can convert any image into an artwork, as the slide shows. In addition to sample apps, there are also a bunch of pre-trained TensorFlow Lite models, both from Google as well as from the TensorFlow community that you can leverage. They cover a variety of use cases, from computer vision to natural language processing and speech recognition. You can discover these models through TensorFlow Hub, TensorFlow Org website, or a GitHub repository called Awesome TensorFlow Lite that one of our Google developer experts has put out together. As we all know, machine learning is an extremely fast-paced field with new research papers breaking the state of the art every few months. In TensorFlow Lite, we spend a significant amount of effort to make sure that these models that are relevant to on-device machine learning are well supported. And in the natural language processing domain, TensorFlow Lite supports MobileBERT, which is the faster and smaller version of the popular BERT model optimized for on-device machine learning. It's up to 4.4x times faster than standard BERT while being 4x smaller with no loss in accuracy. The model size has also been reduced to 100 MB and thus is usable even on lower end devices. The mobile BERT model is available on our website with a sample app for question and answer type of tasks and it's ready to use right now. We are currently working on the quantized version of mobile BERT with an expected further 4X size reduction. And in addition to mobile BERT, we also just released on TensorFlow Hub the mobile version of Albert, an upgrade to BERT that advances the state-of-the-art performance on 12 natural learning, uh, uh, natural learning processing tasks. 
We are really excited about the new use cases that these models will enable, and stay tuned for updates from us on this. Other than NLP, TensorFlow Lite also supports computer vision state-of-the-art models. Efficient Net Lite brings the power of Efficient Net to edge devices and comes in five variants, allowing you to choose from the lowest latency and low model size variant to the high accuracy option, which is called Efficient Net Lite 4. The largest variant, which is the quantized version of Efficient Net Lite 4, achieves an 80.4% ImageNet top on accuracy while still running in real time on a Pixel 4 CPU. The chart here in the slide shows the quantized, uh, how the quantized efficient light, light model performs compared to a similarly quantized version of the sa same popular um, ImageNet classification models. In addition to ensuring that these models run well on TensorFlow Lite, we also wanted to make sure that you can easily customize these models uh, to your own use cases. And so we are excited to announce TensorFlow Lite Model Maker, which enables you to customize a TensorFlow Lite model on your own data set without any prior ML expertise. Here is what you would have to do to train efficient net on your own data set without TensorFlow Lite Model Maker. First, you'd have to clone efficient net from GitHub, download the checkpoints, use the model as a feature extractor, and put a classification head on top of it. And then you'd apply transfer learning and convert it to your flight. But with Model Maker, it's just four lines of code. You start by specifying your data set, choose the model spec that you'd like to use, and boom, it works. You can also evaluate the model and easily export it uh, to a TensorFlow Lite format. In ODML, you have to constantly make a trade-off between accuracy, inference, and speed of model, uh, speed or model size. And therefore, we want to allow you to not only customize models for your own data, but also easily switch between different model architectures. As shown in the code here, you can easily switch by choosing to use either ResNet or EfficientNet. We currently support image and text classification use cases, but new use cases such as object detection or question and answers are coming soon. I'll now hand it off to Lou to talk about how you can easily share, package, and deploy these models. Thanks, Saru. Hi, um, my name is Lou. I'm a software engineer from TensorFlow Lite. Um, once you have a working TFLI model, the next step is to share it with your mobile app teammates and integrate it into your mobile apps. Model metadata is a new feature that makes model sharing and deployment much easier than before. It contains both human-readable and machine-readable information about what a model does and how to use a model. Let's look at an example of the metadata of an image classification model. First, there is some general information about the model, such as name, description, version, and author. And then for each input and output tensor, it documents the details, such as name and description, the content type, uh, which is for things like image or a bounding box, and the statistic of the tensor, such as mean and max values. And it also has information about the social files, uh, that are related to a particular tensor. For example, the label file of an image classifier that describes the output. All of this rich description of the model helps user understand it more easily. It also makes it possible to develop tools that can parse the metadata and then use the model automatically. For example, we developed the TFLite cogen tool for Android that generates model interface with high-level APIs to interact with the model. We'll talk about that in a minute. We provide two sets of tools to develop with TFLite metadata, one for model author and one for mobile developers. Both of them are available through the TFLite support PIP package. For model author, we provide Python tools to create the metadata and pack the social files into the model. The new TFLite model becomes a zip file that contains both the model with metadata and the associated files. It can be unpacked just with common zip tools. One nice feature about the uh, new model format is it is compatible with existing TFLite framework and interpreter. 
For model developers, we provide the cogent tool that can pass the metadata and then generate an Android module that is ready to be integrated into an Android app. The generated module contains a model file with a metadata and the social files packed in. A Java file with easy to use API for inference. In this example, it's my model.java. And it also has the Gradle files and the manifest file with proper configurations. And also the readme file, which has a code snippet of example usage of the module. Let's now take a closer look at those two sets of tools. First, about creating and populating metadata. TFLAN metadata is essentially a flat buffer file. It can be created using the flat buffer API. Here's an example of how to create the metadata using flat buffer Python object API. Then once you have the metadata, you can, uh, you can, have, you can populate it and the associate files um, into a TFLAN model through the Python tool, metadata populator. You can find the full example of how to manipulate with metadata from tensorflow.org. Besides using the general flat buffer bindings, we provide two ways to read the metadata from a model. The first one is a convenient Python tool, metadata displayer, that converts the metadata into a JSON format and returns a list of associate files that are packed into the model. Metadata displayer is accessible through the TFLY support pay package. The second one is the Java library, metadata extractor. Uh, which contains the API to return specific metadata fields and model specs, such as the social files, tensor metadata, and the quantization parameters. It can be integrated directly into an app to replace those hard-coded configuration values. Metadata Extractor is now available on the Maven repository. Now you have added metadata to your TFLAN model Let's see how the Android code generator makes it easy to deploy the model. Running the inference is more than just a model, but also steps like pre- and post-processing and data conventions. Here are the steps that needed when you run inference with a TFLY model in a model app. First, you need to download, you, you need to load your model, and then and to transfer your input data into the format that the model can consume. And then you can run inference with a TFLY interpreter. And finally, you process the output result. Without TFLY support library and cogen, you will have to write a lot of boilerplate code to use a model, such as loading your model and setting up the interpreter, allocating memory for the input array, and converting the native bitmap instance to an RGB float array that the model can consume, and also post-processing the outputs for your app. But with CodeGen, the world of code are reducing to just five lines of code, with a single line for each step, such as load your model, transform your data, run inference, and use the resulting output. The CodeGen tool reads the metadata, and automatically generates the Java wrapper with model-specific API. It also generates a code snippet for you, like the example we just say for image classifier. It makes it extremely easy to consume a TFLY model without any ML expertise. Your model developer teammates will feel much relief now that they don't have to worry about maintaining a junk of complex ML logic in their apps like before. And here's how you use a cogen tool, a very simple command line tool. Just to specify your TFLY model with metadata, your preferred Java package name and class name, and the destination directory. The Cogen tool will automatically generate the Android module that is ready to be integrated into your app as we introduced in a previous slide. The Cogen tool is also available through the TFLY support pay package. We're also working with Android Studio to integrate the Cogen into your favorite IDE, 
so that you can generate the Java model interface for your model by simply importing the model into Android Studio. Try it out in the Canary version of Android Studio. Now, as your TFLine model is integrating to your mobile apps, you are ready to scale it to billions of mobile users around the world. TFLine works cross-platform from mobile OS like Android and iOS to IoT devices such as Raspberry Pi. We also added support for more hardware accelerators such as uh, Qualcomm Hexagon DSP for Android and Core ML for iOS. You can accelerate your model with those delegates by just adding one line of code. Please follow up with another TensorFlow video which talks about those delegates. Also, feel free to visit our website for more details of what we've just covered. And also check out our demo videos for TFLight reference apps. Thanks. Mm -hmm.